Hello Star Wars fans and modelers alike, this is an MPC Star Destroyer kit build with RV model kit parts. Okay, back with you. So I purchased this kit on eBay. It was brand new. I've opened it since. It is the uh, 1980s edition Empire Strikes Back Star Destroyer model kit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I already started building it before I decided that we were going to add the detail parts onto the side because this is super weak. Uh, this is the base of the superstructure. So I kind of stopped cold turkey there. <clears throat> and I'll show you a little later on the uh, detail set that we got from RV Models. Okay. Anyways, getting into the kit just comes in one big bag like this. Okay, and then it has the uh, two hull plates individually here. So, uh, one of the main criticisms of this kit was the raised detail panel lines on here. It just looks like a bunch of cross hatching. Okay, uh, people have sanded that off or completely taken that off. Uh, most likely, I'm going to relieve some of that detail. Um, and possibly scribe some actual panel lines into the plastic. Okay, so that's what we have here for the, this is the top hull here. Okay, those were the, uh, I guess those are supposed to be the turret emplacements, but that's also covered in that detail kit that I have. Okay, so moving on to the lower hull. Um, not too bad, uh, missing some armor plating. Uh, again, raised detail, some of the uh, little pieces on there are kind of far and few in between. So, with a little dome on there, looks pretty good. Okay, breaking into the sprues. Um, again, we kind of see a reoccurring theme of just, just weak detail. I mean, I guess for a kit of its day, it wasn't bad by today's standards and also by any kind of screen um, accurate standards it's just not not good enough so we'll fix that don't worry this is just a preliminary review of the Ertl kit i'm not going to spend too much time going over every little detail here's the side walls get a close-up of that pretty thick very weak uh looks like a old Old computer just kind of redundantly glued together all the way down I don't like it that's also in the detail kit that'll be changed okay and then we get into the rear engine section which isn't too bad it needs a little bit of help uh, particularly um, around this area here on the very end and also these panels here we're gonna add a little bit more dimension to that as well as uh, some new uh, engine uh, outlets here. The three main engines are going to be replaced with the more accurate and detailed engines because what you get from the kit are just these plain, they look like little teacups. Little teacups, they have some lines in there. Uh, these are the smaller vents, which aren't bad. I'm going to keep those. Those are the, the ones that go on the four corners right there. One, two, three, four, around the three main engines. Um, looking into some of the other pieces, the superstructure over here um, and also the superstructure shield generators are going to be replaced. Um, the relief detail is super weak on that. Not a lot of dimension. The new one's going to look a lot better. This is supposed to be the back of the superstructure where the uh, garbage chute is down there at the bottom. Um, so that's going to be replaced. Okay, kind of weak. Um, here's the other side of the sidewall, really thick, kind of like the AMT Millennium Falcon, super thick sidewall. So those are going to get thinned down. It's going to look really good. Uh, in the next video, I'll show you the detail kit. 
by uh, RV Models. It looks very good. And hopefully we'll get a nice little kit together here for uh, one of my customers who's commissioned me to build this for him. Okay, I'm we'll back with you. you. So this is the Devastator conversion kit that I got for the MPC Star Destroyer uh, model kit that I'm building. Um, of course, you know, the sidewalls are way too thick and uh, the details just aren't there. Okay, whether or not this is exactly screen accurate, I'm not sure, but it looks very good. Okay, and for about $80, you get one hell of a resin upgrade uh, that'll really uh, pull off the effect that I think you're looking for in a, a scale Star Destroyer model. Okay, so here are the side walls. Uh, it looks like it's for uh, the main hull as well as the pieces that go around the superstructure buildup. Okay, and it looks like the there's only really two molds and it's just redundant. It repeats itself. So there's the long one and the short one and it just kind of repeats throughout um, the different um, sections that they give you. Okay, moving on to the turret emplacements, which are on the top of the hull on the sides of the superstructure at the very base. Uh, they look pretty good. Uh, not too much to complain about. Gonna need to fill some gaps, sharpen up some edges. No big deal. Uh, the flash that's on the resin uh, is to be expected. It's very thin. Uh, so it is a quality cast. There's no air bubbles. There's no uh, deficiencies. It's a real clean mold, uh, particularly on these uh, sidewall pieces. Uh, these are about half as thick. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to compare it to what's included in the kit so you can see the vast divide between the detail and size of these actual pieces. Okay, so moving on to the turrets, it looks like there's two different kinds. Let me get in here. Uh, we have the uh, circular cannons and the more battleship looking cannons. Um, not sure, it looks like we got five of each, even though there's four cannons. Not sure if they're supposed to be on other places on the ship, maybe on the bottom nose. I don't know. I'll figure out some place to put the extra two that I got. No big deal. Uh, and it looks like these are the little docking bays that go on the side of the sidewalls uh, of the kit, as opposed to the uh, main docking bay, which is on the bottom of the ship for the larger ships, like the the blockade runner and a new hope uh, this is done very well uh, very clean very precise um, looks like it was cast in two pieces and there was uh, the cap that was put onto the bottom piece a little bit of an air pocket won't affect anything no big deal um, one of my favorite pieces is this here um, be able to well, the plans are is to light this, of course, but I'll be able to get a nice ambient glow uh, right, right above there on that ridge. But that'll come later. You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, the main engines back here, I got four. I don't know why. There should only be three. Uh, you know, maybe I'll just uh, put one right on the top. I'm just kidding. So these look good as well. Uh, we got some details around the top here. I'm also going to add a little bit more detail um, to the rims right up here that go around the outside. Uh, all around though, very good uh, casting of those. They look better than the other ones uh, that came with the kit because they're just smooth. Okay, so now moving on to the superstructure. This is probably the best part of the kit, although I do have one complaint. I'm going to have to see how it turns out. Uh, because this is a solid, solid piece of resin here, okay, which is going to make it difficult to light with fiber optics. Okay, having said that, the detail is pretty good. Um, this is very close. I'm sure you could tell by my hands uh, just how close I am to it. But overall, it's good. And the best part about this is uh, that it gives you the accurate superstructure height which is super important because the one on the AMT kit is way too high. I'll show you that as well later. Uh, it looks like there's some putty just filled in here. Uh, that's going to need to be sanded flat for proper fitment of the uh, bridge to the top part here. 
And again, we have more putty down here. It might make it easier or more difficult to clear some of this away because I do plan on lighting the uh, garbage chute in the back here. I think that's what that is. So I'm um, going to do that. Again, details, super nice. Whether or not it's screen accurate, this is as good as it's going to get uh, until you have a, a legitimate kit made by maybe Bandai. I don't know. Who knows? But of the ones on the market right now, unless you want to go big with the Randy Cooper or the other eBay model, which are several hundred dollars, uh, this is the most cost-effective way to go to source a kit off eBay. You're looking at about maybe, you know, anywhere from sixty to a uh, hundred and twenty dollars, depending on, you know, how you get it, who you get it from, whatever. Um, and this kit was, I believe, eighty-four dollars, which was worth it. They had a sale, so it only cost me seventy-nine. Uh, it took maybe two or three days to get. So it was real fast service, uh, a little poor in the communication end, uh, but it's fine. Uh, there's still great guys over there or gals, whoever. So overall, very impressed with the uh, RV model productions Devastator conversion set for the MPC Star Destroyer model. More video to come, show you the comparison between the two. And of course, uh, this is going to be from the beginning to the end build for this Star Destroyer and I hope to put a, a good one out there for one of my customers who's purchasing this kit. So until next video, thank you.